interrupted. Kathy! 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 It's a man on a white horse! Go and tell Mama that Mr. Tilney is here. Mr. Tilney? Now! Go on, boys. Can you go quickly? I'm so ashamed of what I said, what I thought. No, no, no. It's I who should apologise. There's nothing you have said or thought that could justify the way you have been treated. But you were angry with me, and rightly so. I was angry with you, but that is long past. Your imagination may be overactive, but your instinct was true. Our mother did suffer grievously, and at the hands of our father. Do you remember I spoke of a kind of vampirism? Yes. Perhaps it was stupid to express it so, but we did watch him drain the life out of her with his coldness and his cruelty. He married her for her money, you see. She thought it was for love. It was a long time until she knew his heart was cold. No vampires, no blood. The worst crimes are the crimes of the heart. But it was stupid and wicked of me to think such things as I did. Kathy, Mama says, will you bring Mr. Tilney to the drawing room? Mrs. Morland, after what has happened, I have little right to expect a welcome at Fullerton. You had no part in what happened, Mr. Tilney. And Catherine is as you see her. No harm done. Any friends of our children are welcome here. Shall we agree to say no more about it? You're very good. Uh, Are Mr. and Mrs. Allen now at Fullerton? They are, sir. I should like to pay my respects. Perhaps Miss Morland might show me the way. But you can see their house from the window. Rush, Lucy. I'm sure Catherine will be happy to show you Mr. Tilney. He thought I was rich. It was Thorpe who misled him at first. Thorpe who hoped to marry you himself. He thought you were Mr. Allen's heiress, and he exaggerated Mr. Allen's wealth to my father. You were only guilty of not being as rich as you were supposed to be. For that, he turned you out of the house. I thought you were so angry with me, you told him what you knew, which would have justified any discourtesy. No. The discourtesy was all his. I, I, I've broken with my father, Catherine. I may never speak to him again. What did he say to you? Let me instead tell you what I said to him. I told him that I felt myself bound to you. By honour, by affection, and by a love so strong that nothing he could do could deter me from... From what? Before I go on, I shall tell you, there's a pretty good chance he'll disinherit me. I fear I may never be a rich man, Catherine. Please, go on with what you're going to say. Will you marry me, Catherine? To begin perfect happiness at the respective ages of 26 and 18 is to do pretty well. Catherine and Henry were married, and in due course the joys of wedding gave way to the blessings of a christening. The bells rang and everyone smiled. No one more so than Eleanor, whose beloved's unexpected accession to title and fortune finally allowed them to marry. I leave it to be settled whether the tendency of this story be to recommend parental tyranny or reward filial disobedience.